I worked in a very elite women's college in Calcutta. And um, I think when I came to Delhi, my husband got transferred and I came here. And I started applying to colleges, going back into that little groove of teaching English literature. Uh, I just, my mind just felt that it wasn't what I wanted to do with my life. And I wanted to work with children who would never get into elite situations like that. And I, I wanted to be part of a change. And I think that's when I started looking around for where could I work with children. And uh, I, in my search, I met Meera Mahadevan, who was the founder of Mobile Creatures. I went there and there was a little tent. There was a construction site. There were one woman looking after half a dozen, dozen ragged children. And she says, this is where I've started my first crash. Why don't you come and work with me? And that's how it started. In 1973, I, I think I was a young volunteer, 18, 19 year old. I was regularly in touch. Every visit I made to Delhi, I would get in touch with mobile crashes. And it's at that point of time that I had pledged to myself that I would always come back and work for the poor. I want to go where I can make, I can be a part of the change directly. But also the change, if in my lifetime I have to do something, the change cannot be just individual lives changing, which is important for me personally, but something more sustainable and systematic, which means a lot of policy changes. It offered the perfect opportunity of bringing my core skills of working with some of the most excluded young babies and children, understanding child development from a technical perspective, but also the opportunity to really make a difference at the grassroots level and take these lessons to the policy level. So that brought me to Mobile Crashes. Yeah, the first crash was partially funded by the committee that was building the centenary to Gandhiji. And uh, so it was a small little thing to keep one worker and a little bit of transport, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, then because it was such an iconical um, site, because it was to celebrate Gandhiji's life, um, many people came to that building. And there was a Father Lesh, who was the Indo-German social service uh, it was a Christian organization, and um, he came there, and uh, I think he was very touched and moved by what he saw, and he pulled out a 100 rupee note, and he handed it to us, and he said, go and open a bank account and get going. So it snowballed very quickly in that sense of finding sites. It didn't snowball as fast in finding how to do it, what to do and how to develop a team. But the money started coming in from small philanthropic groups. It started spreading this kind of small giving and small and very dedicated labor. At the end of the year, we had decided that we should register a little organization. And we decided we'll just call it Mobile Crashes. There was a new constitution. There was a sense that we are building a new country. There was a law that had just been passed called the Contract Labor Act, 1971. And it said employers have responsibility for looking after labor and there are certain welfare provisions and apart from the few things like, you know, they must be given a canteen and stuff like that, the few labor provisions were um, that they should have a crash of all the strange things. And um, of course, it was like a light bulb, you know, 1971, we had just got started in 69, and we marched in with this gazette notification to 
the office, a forgotten welfare office or something. And we asked the officials that, look, there's an act, 1971. Where are the welfare provisions? We've been to several work sites and there's nothing. And they said, what are you talking about? They hadn't heard about that act. They hadn't heard it had been recently passed. So it was brand new. We knew we couldn't move a step without getting engaged with government and getting engaged with what was happening in the new country. We started with the laws that were in the making or had just come to force with regard to construction workers. So that knocking on those first doors, both of the contractors where we needed to work and of government took a couple of two, three years of work. In the meantime, the philanthropic organizations we met and other people and the volunteers started gathering um, understanding that, look, there's more to this. There were, I think, a lot of internal reviews that had taken place and external evaluations of the organization that had taken place that had strongly recommended that uh, governance and management needed to be separated very clearly and that uh, it was time to get professionals from outside to come and start working. And when in 1995, when Nudula came, we were very fortunate to have some very fine educationists who were part of that early core group of what I would say, volunteers, managers, fundraisers, whatever you want to call it, governance. There was that huge thing of, okay, now this size requires that professionalization. We've got to get into organization building, not just volunteer exploration. Point of entry when we had first time, full-time director for training instead of volunteers coming in to train and train on site. So this was a big leap in terms of organization, building and structure. The respect, the recognition, the support, the training, the compassion for our frontline teams who actually deliver the work on the ground in very challenging circumstances has been a core value of the organization. We worked very closely on the women's issues and women and child overlapping. It wasn't for us. The creches were being pushed. All those issues were being explored, being developed. And at the same time, the women's status and their need for child care. But the big thing was, and I think the realization at the top management was that you cannot do it alone. I think that was a realization at Mobile Krishi, that we needed to have very many partners to go with us. And so from there began the process of networking, of collecting people, of becoming part of the other networks, that it's only when you are a collective when is when you can put the pressure on the policymakers, on the decision makers. We started networking with the group of civil society. It was difficult because all of them were working in very narrow confines of running a preschool or running a health program. Very, very narrow. But what did the entire uh, early childhood development and care comprise of? They had no idea. They, so building the capacity of the civil society also became important. They started conducting researches and they started taking part or organizing public hearings. You get people over, you've done your research, you have your findings, you call the government officials and specialists on board in a public place, and then you say what you have to say. And as we found that the community uh, got mobilized around, they were really activated around the issues of security and protection. These were issues that they immediately aligned with because they understood what it meant. 
the other uh, stakeholder who was a very important part of our work was the contractors and developers at construction sites. One of the provision of the rules is that the employer at the construction site, here being the real estate employer or the contractor contracted by the big real estate company, is obligated to provide the daycare centers at their sites. And the labor department has the authority to inspect, manage, and monitor that these are functioning properly and they're following the norms. We said, great, because till now we were getting donors to pay. So, you know, we were subsidizing them. So they said, great. I said, okay, so you pay for it. This is what it costs. We made our budgets. We started having a very professional relationship with the contractor. From charity, we moved on to a professional relationship where we asked them, I said, you come over, look at our center, look at the quality, and we are accountable for it to you. So, you know, you come and do your supervision. So suddenly, the whole stance of providing services became very different. Historically, right, the law, right to education, which guarantees right to education as a fundamental right in the country, is for children between 6 to 14 years of age. So ever since 2000, mobile crashes along with the right to education partners and multiple other partners have been keeping the dialogue going about an amendment to the right to education act to bring back the three to sixes. Uh, and always the focus has been the holistic integrated piece for early childhood for this age group and not necessarily only the education bit. We've got people from across the country coming in and talking about sibling care and how, you know, Mothers are carrying their children to work and what's happening to this thing. And really demanding that the right to education should have a right to early childhood care and development. In 2017 itself, we got into a Alliance for Right to ECD, which is a, an alliance which Mobile Crashes holds the secretary. We got into a, a, a process where we started drafting the constitutional amendment chapter that if and when the governments are ready to amend the constitution for right to education we must have a, con a, a valid chapter that can be used for amendment of the constitution because that's a technical process at the same time we were also a part of a massive countrywide campaign on the ground building on people's movement to uh, to demand for education for all children under 18 years of age and whilst alliance was a part of this campaign by no means alliance was the only partner we would have had at least 30 to 40 other networks and movements who come who brought forces together to lead this campaign. 2021, 2020, the NEP, the National Education Policy, did get adopted. It did put the focus on, on um, the learning continuum, beginning from conception, the first thousand days to eight years of age. It recognizes that ECD is a continuum up to eight years of age. It recognizes the value of education. What it falls short is that it stopped short of making a clear recommendation for a constitutional amendment to make this policy, in, to convert this policy as a legal entitlement, as a justiciable right for children, which was our big demand and big campaign goal for all these years. In the last three years, we've managed to enter into partnerships, MOUs with three state labor departments who have committed funds from the labor pool, labor says fund that the real estate company pays taxes to, to run daycare centers at work sites for a combination of construction site projects. That was a very big breakthrough for mobile crashes because we wanted one successful example in one state 
to take that as a model to other states and show them look so and so is doing it well and therefore it's possible and it's your mandate to do it well whether it is our security guard in our headquarters or it is the last crash worker everybody is clear about the mission that we stand for the young child and the young child's rights not charity no seva hak